All right, the CQ Worldwide 160 contest starts in a couple hours, actually. And I have this antenna that I bought on the suggestion of uh, M0PLX, old Jack. And he suggested this antenna for 160 mobile. It's about your only option. And I didn't see any reviews or anything on uh, YouTube for it, so I thought we'd we'd give it a shot. So I'm going to replace the the good old 102 inch whip with that antenna. And I don't know if I'm going to put the the uh, the tuner in bypass mode or I'm going to use the tuner. We'll have to figure that out. But I hear they're you know they're very narrow banded, obviously, because it's you know there's a lot of coil to it. So let me get this together. I've already had it out of the package, and unfortunately. Uh, when it was shipped to me, the grub screw that holds in this top whip was missing, completely gone, and then there was another one. That's over here. This thing mounts with your traditional uh, 3H24, but one of these screws here was missing. See how there's two. And one holds it. It's just, if, and I think that's the bottom one that... that We'll hold it because it's got it's drilled into that rod but uh i'll show you but uh at any rate i had to go get some more grub screws from home depot so i got one yeah right here see how it's got a notch keep it from falling out the only problem is it rocks back and forth a little bit so i just want to do it right for now i guess so let me get out of the package and let me get it mounted up here Again, I don't know if I'll use the the tuner. No, we'll just see. We'll see how it, how it works out. I mean, this is going to be real... I would assume it's going to be super inefficient. I mean, 100 watts on 160. It's tough, even on a full-wave dipole or half-wave dipole. But, yeah. We'll see what happens. I've mentioned these little connectors in the past. They're real good quick connect. I call them like plug and socket. There's a matching socket on this side and they're really tough. I use them on all my, all the antennas I have for this thing, but uh, they just simply screw on. One thing you'll need with these is either a really thin wrench or you can make a tool. I made this one out of some aluminum and it fits in here to hold that because there's no way of getting a wrench in there if you don't have something thin. I'm going to put this this whip in the end, and I think I'm going to take some notes, uh, you know, at different lengths and see where it's resonant at different, uh, different positions in here. So let me go grab my little notepad, and we'll get, we'll get the, some data. Okay, I want to show you something. Okay, I've got the antenna on, right? And obviously it's hooked to the tuner. So I came over here to test it. On my rig, from my rig expert here, and the first thing I did was it's on 160 meters, so I'm doing my sweep right, and I notice there's nothing. And the reason is, this tuner is not in bypass mode unless there's power applied to it. In other words, you can't just hook up your coax without the, without powering it up and expect it to be in bypass mode out there. You have to have power to it, and just not not use the tuner or not have the tuner engaged in order for it to be in bypass. Again, this is with the radio off, I get nothing. Now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna turn the radio on. Now it's on, I heard the uh, radio come to, or the tuner come to life in the back of the truck. Again, it's plugged in obviously. We just, the only thing we have uh, disconnected from the radio is this going into the, the analyzer. So now we're gonna run another sweep. There you go. There's your dip. So that tells me a lot right there. Um, I was assuming that the thing was in bypass mode just uh, at rest, you know, with no power, but that's not true. So it looks like with 42 and a half inch of that uh, top section up there sticking out is, at least in my situation, it's uh, what, 1.963. So... I don't even know where I'm supposed to be, to be honest. I've never been on 160 meters, but honestly, that seems pretty good. Um, do people work lower? Do they work closer to two megahertz? I don't know, but uh, I'll play around with it. 
Um, let's extend it a little bit and see if we can how, how low we can get it. So at 42 and a half, we're at 1963. Okay, I pulled the rod out as much as it'll go, or as far as it'll go, and that's, uh, so it's 42 and a half inch, it looks like a 10 inch range between, uh, you know, as much uh, you got to, to work with on that rod. So this second one is 52 and a half inches uh, sticking out of that second piece, and I got 1.85 megahertz. So it looks like our working range is only from 1.85 to 1.963. This is my second second one I did right here. So, not much of a range, but I guess that's good enough. Um, I've never been on 160. I don't even know what my target is. I don't know if there's a particular phone portion and, you know, CW portion or whatever, but uh, I think we can work with that. If I can touch it up with a tuner if I have to. I don't really want to. Uh, 160's mobile with 100 watts is going to be one of those ones where you know, you got to make it as efficient as possible. Got to work with what you got. Um, I like the antenna. It's well built. It was around, I got it at DXC. It was about $130, I think. It's a, it's a little high, but uh, it seems well built. And uh, ah, we'll see what happens. Again, this is the Moonraker Ampro 160. It says bandwidth of 15 kilohertz. Well, I'll let you know. Okay, it's now <clears throat> it's now Sunday afternoon. The contest is over, just about over, and I wanted to follow up on this uh, this Ampro antenna. You can see I've got it on a on a uh, Hustler mast like this. This is what I ended up using. So I ended up kind of elevating it with that. I thought it'd uh, make it a little bit more efficient. I don't know if it did or not, but let me tell you. Uh, uh, first off, I'll say I, I like the antenna. I'll just go ahead and give you the conclusion right up front. I do like the antenna. Uh, super high Q antenna, as expected, obviously. I mean, it's basically one big coil on 160, but it does work. So I ended up with about 30-something uh, contacts, uh, 25 states, and four countries. So I think I did okay. I could have done better. I, I kind of gave up on Friday night, which I'll explain. But let me tell you... The problem with this antenna, it works fine, it works great, but in a contest setting, it's hard to use, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Okay, remember we, we had a workable range of, at least here in the, in the yard, of course, there's a, I'm right next to the house, maybe I, it could have been a little bit wider, I don't know, but we found that uh, with the, uh, the top whip uh, all the way flush inside, or you know, as far down as it would go, we've got 1.96, and then... Uh, uh, with it extended out as far as I could get it, we got basically 1.85. That's plenty of range. Okay, after messing around with 160 again, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, it's my first venture into 160. So that's plenty of range. That's that's enough to work with. But uh, again, it's a high Q antenna, and it's tough to use in a contest situation. Okay, in a normal antenna, you know, you got your SWR over here, and let's just say your frequency down here right so and you'll get a dip you know something like this you get a nice good wide dip to work with where you can you know use the antenna here and here and obviously here and you got a nice the problem with this antenna is it's got a wide range except the tuning range is super narrow you get a, a bunch of these uh, daggers so you're tuning into this dagger every time so as long as you're here you're fine it's just you can't stray much plus or minus out of there before you know you run into SWR problems and your radio is not happy. So, with that said, it's very tough with this antenna because without a tuner, I'll, let me preface it with that, and I'll explain that in a minute. Without a tuner, you know, well, let's just start with the, the contest method. If you're going to try to call CQ, man, you're going to be a weak signal. You know, <laughs> this is a very compromised antenna. You can sit there and call CQ. I did it a couple of times. I had a couple of takers. I think I only had two the whole time. Uh, and I think that's due to being such a weak signal and the chances of somebody rolling across you through the bands is, and it's, I think it's, it's, it's slim unless they're really, really out looking. So, you know, the, the calling CQ is tough. Uh, search and pounce. Without a tuner, again, you're back to this problem, right? 
okay, you're going to search and pounce down here. Well, you're going to have to tune down there to get your SWR correct, to make your radio happy. You know, and it's just, you're going to have to do it all, all along the way without a tuner. So it's, it's just tough. Now, if it wasn't a contest situation, it wouldn't be a problem. You could just get your, your rig expert out, uh, set it where you think it's in the band, and hope that it's open, and then just tune your radio to the bottom of this dip. Start calling. You know, that, that wouldn't be such a problem. But in a contest situation, and let me give you an example. I went out there with the intent of, if I had a game plan, I was going to go, I said, okay, I'm going to go out there, fire the radio up, try to find an open spot, and I'm going to tune with the rig expert to somewhere within that open spot. It doesn't have to be exact as long as there's nobody there. Well, see, uh, this 160 contest, a whole lot more people in it than I thought, so it was just jam-packed. There's no way you're going to win. And <laughs> a couple of times I found an open spot, tuned it up, and as soon as I got ready to call CQ, well, guess what? Somebody else took took over the frequency, so it's kind of a mess in that respect. But, uh, okay, the search and pounce, again, it's, like I said, it's tough because you've got to, you know, you don't have, almost have to tune it every single time you want it to pounce more or less so not too good in that respect but uh uh what did i end up doing? okay so friday night i got out there too early um again not too experienced on 160 not at all and i got out there too early i think i was out there just after dark it just wasn't late enough in the evening you got to be there at least my local time probably midnight as that's when it, that's when it starts getting good but anyway i got out there and I was faced with this dilemma and I didn't want to use the tuner. I didn't think the tuner was going to do anything. I thought that would make it even worse because, you know, it's just masking a problem basically, basically anyway. But I said, uh, so I got frustrated and left. I think I made two contacts, California and somewhere else. Okay, fine. So I went home, folded up shop and I put the antenna back in the package. I was like, man, I'm done with this. This is, the antenna works. It's just not going to work in this situation. So I put it up. Next day rolls around. Sun goes down. I'm like, you know what? man screw this i'm gonna go out there and try it again so i put the antenna back together and i was gonna you know use the tuner this time so i was gonna try to tune my way through this so i had a game plan remember we had uh what is that? oh yeah we have uh we have basically 10 inches of play in that top whip right so i said okay this is my game plan i'm gonna shoot for this number i'm gonna hit the tune button i'm gonna tune this tune this up i'm gonna work everybody i can in this range i want to wear them out I'm going to go to, you know, I'm going to add five inches to that. I'm going to wear that out, tune it up, wear it out, and then I'm going to go up here. So I was going to use three different sections of this mast with the tuner helping me. And, and that's what I did. I, uh, I, uh, and to be honest, I think I could have just tuned to the middle right here and just use the tuner throughout and it probably been okay, but I tried to get it as close as I could. So that's how I, that was my methodology or my methodology. Uh, I'm not sure about this mast. I think it probably did help. I, how much, I don't know. It's hard to hard to say anything about that. But uh, yeah, I'm impressed with the antenna. And in fact, um, it would make me consider other Moonraker products in this, in this line. Because I think they make an 80, and I'm pretty sure they make a 40. So I would definitely consider them. They're well built. I like the, the, uh, their construction. You know, it seems to be kind of a you no know, frills business type antenna. So, yeah, that's it. I, I, I think I did okay. I got, uh, oh, I got across the pond. That's another thing. Uh, I, uh, you know, I was calling. I got some Californias. On, that's another thing. That, you know, I was impressed with 160. Uh, you can get a lot of states like that. I got like, what did I say, like 20-something states. And, they, you know, I'm just, I wasn't doing the assisted or anything. I was just jumping around. There was people from all over on there. But, uh Oh, I, early into the night, I got into Ireland, and I was like, okay, I got across the pond. Now I know this thing works. So that was a good confidence boost and allowed me to stick around. And I got uh, Bon Air, and I got a couple of stations in Canada. So, yeah, it was it was fun. I would definitely do it again. Um, but, obviously, I would try harder. That's, you know, that... Uh, I think, realistically, if I would have been out there Friday night and gave it my all to... I don't know, midnight to three o'clock in the morning, I could have realistically probably picked up 10 to 12 more contacts, you know. And I, you know, I could have probably picked up 20 the first night, but again, the second night they would have been dupes because, you know, you start stumbling over calls you've already gotten a log. So, yeah, it was fun. I liked it. But, uh, yeah, that's my follow-up. It's a good antenna. Highly recommend it. Um, it's about your only game in town for uh, 
mobile 160. I don't know what other, I don't even know if they make another antenna or another manufacturer makes a 160 antenna, but that's it. I think I covered everything. Uh, yes, sir. That's it. All right. Thanks for watching.